Hello, welcome friends to a new session on transformer technology. In today's session, you will learn something on transformer routine testing at manufacturer's place according to standards. And this session will help all the uh, testing engineers or graduate engineer trainees or students who uh, want to learn more in electrical technology or even the inspectors who go for transformer inspection. To them, this will be really helpful. Before going further into the discussion, uh, we want to introduce ourselves. Like we 3SA EcoPower, we the directors got tremendous experience in this field of transformers. Like um, we worked in uh, India, Middle East, Far East, Southeast, then the UK and the Europe. So we got all the working knowledge and uh, our design transformers are right from Japan, Australia to the Americas. Like uh, uh, we did very much, uh, uh, we got a lot of what you call uh, experience in this field. And uh, we, the directors, we, we are friends like, uh, we came together, we thought, okay, why can't we start on our own? So with that in mind, uh, we just scouted for some uh, industrial land and we zeroed in near Tada AP, that is a government estate, industrial estate. Uh, the idea was like it should be strategically located near a seaport and a city. So Chennai is the nearest city and we got Chennai port and Nellur port, Krishnapatnam. So that was the idea in zeroing into Tada. Then we started within one and a half years of construction, we started commercial production in the year 2019 and we got very good customers. Uh, uh, some like uh, the DX and Singapore, they are setting up a plant in Hyderabad and uh, yes, we are supplying transformers to them. We can manufacture transformers up to 16 MB of the 6 KV class. We are very well conversant with Minton Oil or Testers, Silicon Oil, Mybel. So we can make all those transformers. And uh, we do make amorphous core transformers which are very much energy efficient. And the dry type transformers, we import coils and we assemble it our factory. In fact, we supply to many shopping malls in and around Chennai with the uh, added uh, switch gear and making them as a packet substations. Uh, and uh, we do make special transformers like earthing transformers, rectifiers, high impedance transformers etc. Even spot connected for railways we make. Then uh, even open delta transformers for any specific uh, design requirements we make. We make substations and uh, the hallmark is like we make compact license really compact area wise. You know the, the cost of the land is so high nowadays. So we are very good in designing a compact substation in two cells. And of course, we make uh, transfers for the renewable energy sources like windmill and solar. We are quality committed company. When I say quality committed, it's not like every other company where they just say for the sake of uh, quality. No. In the true sense, we are committed to quality. Like how all the three top are quality oriented and uh, the same thing will percolate down to the bottom most level of the organization and uh, we, got, we are ISO certified, uh, all the raw materials can be traced, uh, within no time we have got, uh, we have done CPRA testing of transformers, IS 11T compliant and uh, more in the subsequent slides. A quick run through our quality systems like our quality documentation is something unique, like you cannot find it anywhere else. We can press back right from uh, the time it has been locked in as a work order, all the raw materials that is that are going into the transformer trace back to the manufacturer's batch number and their serial numbers for the components and our internal um, production uh, physical dimensions, technical parameters, checks at each stage, then uh, any reworks, if at all done on those transformers, and uh, the final testing, the dispatch, the outgoing checks, everything is captured and monitored, and uh, 
the money we are spending, the time and the money we are spending with the quality checks, we don't see that as a, uh, an additional burden to the cost of the transformer, but it pays back in giving a better quality product and doing better service, if at all at site, site works demand to the customers. And the more we do on these things, it helps our R&D. And in fact, we always try to reduce the cost of the transformers without what you call without uh, diluting the quality and uh, ultimately it is like a win-win situation for us like we always think the customers should get satisfied at the same time we should not lose uh, any orders or save money the technical edge we got on other suppliers is like uh, we all three directors have a combined experience of six decades that is 60 years and all these things like uh, uh, in one side is like how to approach a customer, how to understand his requirements, how to deliver his requirements, how to satisfy all the needs of the customers with respect to the product. And at the factory side, uh, what value addition we can give to the customers like uh, the customers may not, may not specify uh, the welding of the, for example, the welding of the stiffness. We got some R&D on that and the paint system many customers don't specify the paints but we stick to certain paint systems otherwise we go according to the climatic conditions where the transformer is supposed to be installed then the hardware why to go for high tensile why not ss if at all ss is required what precautions we have to go or the clamping structure inside the core and coil assembly like and the number of hardware to be used the tie rods the calculations, all these things like we got a lot of case studies and we evolved the design model. Ultimately, it is to the benefit of the customer. So that is the technical advantage we can provide to all our customers. Now let's go into the actual session. All the transformers a manufacturer makes are subjected to many tests. Some tests are made at, are done at factory, some are done at external lab, uh, and some even for commissioning. Today, what we are going to understand in the beginning, let us understand the tests according to the standards. Now, in general, we follow, being in India, we follow IS 2026. Yes, the same tests are uh, like similar in even IEC 60076. So according to IS 2026, all the transformers are tested uh, uh, in broadly three categories. One is the routine test, the second type test, and the third one is the special test. Every manufacturer should routine test the transformers at his factory. Now when I say routine test, the name itself says like these are routine. All the transformers that are in the system that are being dispatched, a manufacturer should do and these tests in IS 2026 part 1 are mentioned under clause 10 and all these routine tests like as I said are, are compulsion like if anyone is sending a transformer without routine testing that means the transformer is not fit for energizing and if you go to the standard 2026 part 1 clause 10 all the routine tests are like uh, uh, 6 routine tests they majorly mentioned like uh, winding, res winding resistance, voltage ratio, impedance, load loss, no load loss, and all these things like we'll, we'll discuss in detail. The other type of tests that needs to be done on transformers are like type tests and special tests. Type tests are like a uh, temperature rise test and a uh, dielectric type test or the impulse test, what we generally call impulse test and temperature rise test are called the type test. As you say, when you say type test, these are not required on all the transformers. This can be like on a sampling basis just to show the adequacy or the design capability of the manufacturer. And similarly special tests. There are some nine special tests mentioned in the standard and the more what you call uh, important or significant test is the short circuit withstand test. That is really important, like the transformer, how a transformer can withstand short circuit uh, uh, when it is in the system. So again, that is the design capability of the manufacturer. To understand the ma capability of the manufacturer, many customers ask 
a short circuit test so all the tests are mentioned in uh, the standard as we are discussing about the routine tests on transformers at the factory or the manufacturer's place we have to follow certain minimum safety precautions because testing of transformers is hazardous or if anything goes wrong it it can prove fatal or it may prove fatal so the inspectors who go for inspection or the engineers or the workmen who go uh, for the testing they should be aware of all minimum things like proper earthing of the system safety gloves and shoes or any other personal protective equipment at least a rubber mat as test bed means the subject transformer should be placed on it rubber mat then safety barriers in the testing department audio and visual warnings all these things should be in place and people should follow and my suggestion or my request to all of you who who is taking who is listening to this uh, or watching this session is like uh, you check with your host or the testing engineer in charge uh what to touch and what not to touch my suggestion is don't touch anything don't touch any equipment or any transformer even if it is your own like you go for inspection you may feel that that is your own property don't do that don't touch anything without the consent of the in charge there and ensure that all the testing equipment is duly calibrated calibration is an important thing it's just not for iso it should take it should be a inherent quality consciousness built in in the manufacturer space because the equipment if it is not calibrated the results cannot be validated properly so ensure all the test equipment is calibrated the routine tests that are being performed on the transformers at the manufacturer's place again can be sub classified into three divisions this is for just understanding uh, by experience we are telling this this is not according to standard or anything just by experience like uh, few tests are on characteristics few are performance and few are on strength like the characteristics are like insulation resistance test where we measure the ir value or then the turns ratio which will uh, tell you whether the voltage transformation whatever the customer is specifying happens or not the vector group to ensure that it fits in the system the resistance test of the windings so these you can say uh, like they are the characteristic tests now the performance things are the no load loss test the impedance voltage and the load loss test these three are the performance oriented like whenever a customer specifies these three things are really important more in subsequent uh, uh, session we will understand now the strength of the transformer as far as the routine tests are concerned are the high voltage test and the dvdf test or the double voltage double frequency test both these tests once the transformer passes we feel it is or the standard says it is adequate to place in the system so we'll understand more about this test in uh, some time from now now let us go into the testing of the transformers let us start with the after doing the insulation resistance test let us start with the winding resistance when now i'm not going to teach you or tell you about the testing procedure because testing procedure you may find in the standards what i'm going to tell you is about the important points you need to observe while doing this test uh, and uh, when we start when we are doing winding resistance of course the equipment required is obviously a winding resistance meter and a thermometer now the important points are like you have to measure the ambient the temperature because ambient temperature is maybe it varies it can be anything not necessarily a 30 degree or 30 32 degree ambient as per the standard it may vary depending on the seasons and the place where you are testing why we need to do the ambient temperature like why we need to measure because different ambient temperatures will result in different resistances of the windings resistance of any metal more so when we are talking about the metal or the winding uh, conductor we use more often copper and aluminum so any metal the resistance changes with the temperature 
So if I am measuring at 10 degrees centigrade or 20 degrees centigrade in a winter and uh, tomorrow the transformer is energized during a summer season where the ambient temperature is 35 degrees or 40 degrees C, now there will be a variation in the temperature. So in order to remove all these variations, problems arising because of variations, the standard specify all the resistances of the transformer windings shall be referred to 75 degrees centigrade. The first thing is like you have to measure the ambient, measure the resistance and convert it to the 75 degrees where a formula is given in the standard. Now the second important point while measuring winding resistance is use only direct current or the DC. Why? Because transformer is a inductive circuit because transformer basically is a is a following mutual inductance principle. Whenever there is an inductive circuit, the XL comes into picture. So in order to avoid the XL, which will deviate the original resistance of the copper windings, it is essential to send the direct current into the transformer due, uh, while performing this test. So these are the important things. Once these points are followed, the result of the transformer is you will get a winding resistance referred to 75 degrees centigrade. The next test is the measurement of voltage ratio. The equipment required is a ratio meter and nowadays everyone is using a automatic transformer ratio meter that is ATRM. Now, the important points like generally people will do uh, the ratio test on the principal tap and some people may do even at the maximum tap and the minimum tap but it is always advisable or it is essential to measure the ratio at each and every tap position because even if there is a variation in a single tap then the required voltage may not come or required transformation may not happen when it is operated under that tap in the system. So it is always correct to measure the ratio at all tap positions. As you know, standard specify plus or minus 0.5% tolerance on this turns ratio. Once this test is performed, the transformer ratio or the turns ratio is within the tolerance limits across all taps. That means the transformer designed and manufactured are in sync and is according to the customer's requirement. The next test is the measurement of phase displacement. The idea of this test is to ensure that the transformer manufactured is according to the customer's requirement, according to the vector groups mentioned like DYN11, YN D1 or uh, DYN1, DYN5. There are many vector groups according to the standard the vector group should be in compliance with the requirement because the system as such is according to that vector group means the phase sequence when it is happening it will follow a certain phase sequence uh, and the, the most predominant vector group people use is DYN11 and it is very easy test like you can use a multimeter supply multimeter and a three phase uh, uh, 250 volt supply and uh, like uh, you have to mention, you have to ensure that you are measuring voltages across all the terminals and photograph. It is very easy, very easy to uh, perform this test. And once you plot a graph, you will understand whether the voltages are according to the requirement of the vector group or not. All these things are clearly mentioned in the standard. The next test on the list is like the no load measurement of no load loss and the no load current. Why we have to measure the no load loss? It is a performance thing and as you know no load losses are otherwise called as standing losses. Whenever you energize a transformer these losses are supposed to be there like they will be there that's all and uh, in order to measure this uh, these losses uh, nowadays people are using uh, more and more manufacturers are using power analyzer. Earlier people were uh, uh, using uh, 3 watt meter or 2 watt meter methods and uh, Whenever they are using those analog watt meters, they are subjected to parallax error or damping factor or in other words, they can be easily manipulated. Now the system is changed like people are using 
uh, the power analyzers just check for the power analyzer you will get a better result and the other important points while making this open circuit test or the no load loss measurement test is like the frequency at which the test is being performed frequency plays a crucial role whenever there is a variation in frequency the no load losses will change so ensure or observe the frequency at which the no load, loss, no load losses are being measured and tabulate it to 50 hertz because that is where the manufacturer is guaranteeing like it can be 50 hertz in indian or european standards or european uh, systems or if it is america or saudi arabia or uh, like vietnam wherever their people are using ansi it may be 60 hertz so just check the frequency at which it is being tested and ensure it is corrected to 50 hertz or the frequency at which it is going to be placed at and uh, after performing this test you will understand what are the no load losses of the transformer and what is the no load current and i'm not going to tell you about more technical things like imu i omega during a open circuit what will be uh, imu or i omega so no load current is just the current which helps the transformer to energize it is a very very minimal current and a good transformer will have very less no load current and very less power factor just like the no load losses we have to measure the load losses and this test the next test to the no load loss or the open circuit test is the short circuit test or the impedance voltage and the load loss measurement test again the same thing you need a power analyzer for this instead of the wattmeters and i use a variac now the important points like you know very well when we are saying short circuit uh, one side of the terminals are short circuited then the other side you will inject the rated current and all those things you will you will understand or you will learn more on how to perform these tests if you are following the standard but the important point here it is like you have to again measure the temperature at which this test uh, is being carried out again the reference temperature and once this temperature is understood you have to understand like uh, uh, the whatever the voltage uh, whichever is measured whether it is in whether the value when converted to the reference temperature of 75 degrees or any other reference temperature like some standards say even 85 degrees for example ANSI so whatever temperature it is being referred to whether that is in acceptable tolerances or not because losses as such have a tolerance according to the standard both no load loss and load loss and the total losses if the customer is specifying the maximum losses then there is no positive tolerance which is very obvious now coming to the impedance voltage while performing this test impedance voltage as you know is very very important uh, character or important performance figure of a transformer why because impedance transfer impedance voltage is the one which plays a critical role while performing a short circuit test uh, the special test what i mean is a special test at an external laboratory because that will limit the short circuit current we can understand or uh, i will tell you more about the importance of the impedance voltage when we are discussing about the short circuit test in the special test category in the next session but at the factory we measure the impedance voltage while performing the uh, short circuit impedance and load loss test according to the IS2026 standard or IEC60076 standard routine test once the load loss test or the short circuit test and measurement of volt uh, impedance uh, test is done the next test is like the separate source AC withstand voltage test or the dielectric routine test it comes under dielectric routine test as per IS2026 uh, part 1 the details of this test is mentioned in IS2026 part 3 uh, and uh, we need a high voltage test setup and a stopwatch to measure the timing because this test has to be done for 60 seconds 
we have to inject a very high voltage according to the voltage levels of the transformer and the test voltage mentioned against that voltage level in the standard to which the transformer is made. So to perform this test it has to be done for a minute and we have to check. The important points is like no air bubbles. Ensure that there are no air bubbles in the transformer like once we fill with oil uh, there may be some air bubbles so you have to give enough time for the transformer to settle down first so that all the air bubbles are wiped out release the air by means of uh, a release plug or anything because whenever there is a air there is a big chance of breakdown voltage or insulation failure so ensure that there is there are no air bubbles then that from the test kit to the transformer there will be a high voltage injection wire ensure there is ample of clearance otherwise you will find a lot of humming noise and sometimes it may even break down so this should be an important point and of course record the leakage current now once we are doing this test it is like the strength uh, to measure the strength of the insulation now whenever there is a breakdown voltage while performing this test within the one minute duration that means if you are for example if you are applying 28 kV for 11 kV a transformer according to the standard and if there is a breakdown in the voltage the transformer instead of 28 kV the voltage is falling down below 28 kV to 20, 10, 5, 4 whatever it is then it means that there is an insulation failure in the transformer it can be because of less clearances insulation failure not necessarily mean a paper or oil it can be even because of the less clearances between hv and lv windings lv to the core or hv tank or from channel to the coils it can be anything so it is basically to check the insulation strength to the nearest earth point in this case if you are doing a high voltage test on a hv winding so hv winding to the nearest earth point it can be a lv winding or it can be a channel or it can be a tank or it can be anything so basically we are measuring the strength of the insulation provided between a live part to its nearest earth potential according to the standards the voltage levels being defined according to the standards After the separate source voltage withstand test or the high voltage test, what we do is the IOV test or the induced over voltage withstand test. Now for this test again there is a separate test setup or the test kit. You need a stopwatch. The time for this again according to the uh, standard IS2026 part 3 or even IEC60076 part 3. Uh, you can vary the uh, uh, duration of the test but it should not be less than the 15 seconds if you are just injecting double voltage at double frequency then the test duration is 60 seconds otherwise depending on your uh, frequency generator or uh, the voltage generator it can be uh, uh, reduced to 30 seconds or 40 seconds or less than 60 seconds in other words but not less than 15 seconds now by the important points while doing these tests are again similar to the uh, high voltage test there should not be any air bubbles ensure that one then uh, the hv voltage hv terminals or the one side of the terminal should be in open circuit and you gradually raise the voltage to the duration uh, once you reach attain the uh, required voltage hold it for the duration whatever is according to the calculations if at all there is a collapse in applied voltage during the duration of this test that means the insulation is not adequate again like this basically is to ensure the interlayer insulation or uh, the terminal clearances if it is not according to the standard uh, these things can be easily verified the transformer is set to pass this test only if there is no breakdown in the voltage during the duration of these tests once the IOV test is completed the routine tests are completed now 
what we do or my suggestion is like once the uov test is completed it is always better to do the ir value test again like use a megger or a insulation resistance tester and check the result with or against the result like what you are doing before performing the routine test it should be more or less the same because this ensures that the insulation resistance did not drop down after performing all the routine tests this we do at 3 si eco power and apart from the routine test mentioned in the standard what we do at 3 si eco power is like we do the magnetic balance test of the windings to ensure that the windings are placed properly geometrically within the transformer core the oil bdv test because the standard says the oil bdv according to uh, like a filtered unfiltered what the values are we do the oil bdv test to ensure that the results are matching not only according to the standard but according to the supplier's test certificate and the third test what we do is like as a routine test on all the transformer is the pressure test on fully assembled transformer we apply the pressure uh, according to the customer specification if not customer is not specifying anything we put the pressure according to the cbip manual or the central board of irrigation and power there is a manual so we ensure that there is a proper pressure test on the all the transformers and we duly do on all the transformers at least for 8 hours if there are any leak we ensure that the leak is arrested maybe because of improper tightening or anything else we ensure that the arrestor, uh, the leak is arrested and uh, once if at all we find a leak we again perform the test once the leak is arrested we ensure that there is a zero leak and then only we clear the transformer for dispatch before concluding the session i want to just mention about our social responsibility our principles on them like we advocate quality at reasonable pricing and of course we want the whole world to look at india as a global leader for manufacturing quality products and we are committed to that uh, with our installed policies processes and products thank you very much and if you require any details or clarifications you may write to us at the below mentioned email id and if you need any transformers yes we are there always to support you thank you very much have a good time